Okay. Now, for this lesson, we talk about quadratic functions. Now, what is a quadratic function? A quadratic function is a polynomial function of degree two. Remember this one, of degree two. Because if the degree is one, it's a linear function. The standard form is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, we review our topic on quadratic equations. Remember the standard form for quadratic equations? It's ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. In a quadratic function, we just change the zero to f of x. Why? Because f of x means function of x. It means what should be the value of the function given the value of your x. And remember, f of x is equal to y. So we can also write our quadratic functions as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. They are just the same. Now, the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. What's a parabola? This one. It could go open up or it can also open down. It will not open sidewards. If it opens sidewards like this one, we don't call it parabola. We call it hyperbola. But it's not a quadratic function. It's only a quadratic equation. Now, here are some examples of quadratic functions. The first one, f of x equals x squared plus 4. The second, y equals 3x squared minus 10. You look at the exponents, still squared. You look at one side, f of x or y. So they are called quadratic functions. Let's have more. For example, let us just look at the ones that are not quadratic functions. Number two. Why is this not a quadratic function? Anyone in the chat box? Anyone can tell me. Why is it not a quadratic function? Because when you multiply 2x and x squared, what's the answer? It's 2x cool. cubed. So the power of 3. So it's not a quadratic function. How about number three? What's the degree? Look at the exponent. One. So it's not a quadratic function. Remember in grade eight, we call it linear. Number four is a quadratic function. And number five, you look at the exponents. Three. It's not a quadratic function. So hope it's clear with you. Do you have any questions before I'll go next to the next subtopic? Or give me a thumbs up if you understood what a quadratic function is. Very good. I see more thumbs up now. Uh, Mom. Yes. Do we have a test tomorrow? Today, actually, we have a test. We also have a test tomorrow. Okay. Now. Let's go to the next one. Now, this is what we call the vertex form. What is a vertex form? In the vertex form, the vertex form of the quadratic function is here. A quantity x minus h squared plus k. Now, if this is your parabola, the lowest point is called the vertex or if your parabola opens downwards this point the highest point the tip is also called a vertex now the vertex of the parabola can be written as h comma k and how do we write it here in the vertex form again that's f of x equals 
a quantity x minus h squared plus k. And remember, a should not be equal to zero. Now, how do we write a, par, um, a quadratic function from its standard form to the vertex form? Let's have the following steps. Number one, step number one, we group the terms x squared and x. So for example, we have f of x equals x squared plus 10x plus 25. In step number one, we group the x's together. Next, if the numerical coefficient of x squared is not equal to one, we factor it out. You can do this by dividing both x and x squared by the numerical coefficient of x squared. So for example, if we have f of x equals 2x squared plus 10x plus 25, we group and we divide them by 2, each of them divide by 2. Next, in step number 3, we complete the expression. What do we do? Remember, completing the square method. The B, you divide it by 2, then you square it. So for example, we have 10x. So 10 divided by 2, that's 5. You square it, we have 25. What will you do next? The number that you added in the parenthesis should be subtracted in the constant term. So if we add 25 here, we subtract 25 to the other side. Then we identify the vertex of the parabola. Let us start, okay? Let's have our first example. In example number one, we rewrite, we rewrite each quadratic function in the vertex form and then we identify its vertex. So let's start with example number one. What to do first? We need to group our x. Ready? Let's start. f of x, we group our x together. So x squared minus 10x plus 19. Next. The coefficient of a is one, so no need to divide. Next, we do completing the square, okay? In your chat box, what must be added to x squared minus 10x plus something to make it a perfect uh, trinomial? Very good, you add 25. 10 divided by two, that is, again, b over 2, then you square it. 10 divided by 2 is 5. You square it, the answer is 25. So again, when we add 25 here, we subtract 25 to the constant term. Then next, we need to factor this. How will you factor it? Mm, remember? This is a perfect trinomial. So square root of x squared is x. Square root of 25 is 5. Then sub minus, so minus in the middle. Square it. How about the other? 19 minus 25 minus negative 6. So this is now our vertex form. How do we identify the vertex? Remember, it's x minus h squared plus k, right? So the opposite sign of this. The vertex is the opposite sign, 5, and copy. Again, only this one is the opposite sign. The other, copy. So that's negative 5 and negative 
six. That's it. This is now the vertex form, and this is now our vertex. Any questions? Okay, we will go to the next one. Ready? There. Okay, let's start. Step number one. We group all the x together. So x squared minus 4x plus 10. Group. Next group. C. Complete the square. Okay. In the chat box, what should be added to x squared minus 4x? Sorry. To make it a perfect square. What must be added? Mm -hmm. Remember, this is 4 divided by 2 is 2, right? Square it. So the answer is 4. Very good. 4. Um, here, the last term, remember, should always be positive. Remember the perfect square trinomial? Even if it's minus here, the last term must be positive. And what number you'll add here, you'll subtract it in the constant. Now, factor. Okay, what is the factor of x squared minus 4x plus 4? In the chat box, you type. What's the factor? X, very good. X minus 2 squared. Next. 10 minus 4 is 6. This is now in the vertex form. What's our vertex? Opposite of this. 2. Copy. 6. That's it. Let's go to the last example, okay? Let me have this. Ready? First one. Group all the x together. Next, if you notice in your x squared, it's the coefficient is not one. So we'll divide both by the coefficient two and two. Where do we place the, the two here? We place it outside. So it becomes x squared plus x minus four. Next, let's do the completing the square. What should be added to x squared plus x in order for it to become a perfect square trinomial? What must be added? Mm -hmm. Yes, one fourth. Why? B. B over two square. So you need to add one fourth. Add one fourth on one side subtract one fourth on the other side so we now have okay this time you need to factor what's the factor of x squared plus x plus one fourth what's the factor it's x the square root of x squared what's the square root of one fourth plus one half squared. Then simplify this. That's negative. Mm, what happened? Ah, this must be multiplied by two. Sorry. Because there's two outside. So this negative four minus two over four or one half. So it becomes minus nine over two. This is now our vertex form. How about our vertex? Opposite sign of this, negative one half. Copy this, negative nine over two. That's it. Now, do you have any question? 